Hello, my name is Joe Campion from Quadrant Building Control and I'm here today to talk to you about the changes to Part L of the building regulations. Since our previous video on Part L, the government has issued a new consultation with a new draft approved document. There are some new details and a few important changes. And of course, we now have implementation dates and transitional provisions. In this short video, we'll look at these and recap the main differences from the current 2013 Part L. For a more detailed run through of this complex document, check out our deep dive video. You might need to bring a cup of coffee though. The new Part L is a stepping stone towards the government's future home standards of 2025. This standard is part of the government's plan to bring all UK emissions to net zero carbon by 2050. It represents a significant step up from the current 2013 edition of Part L. The new approved documents will be issued in December 2021 and come into force in June 2022. There are transitional provisions available within the approved document. The application must be received before June 2022 and work must start on site before June 2023. For multiple dwellings on an application, each dwelling must have commenced for transitional provisions to apply. So, on an application for 100 dwellings, work on all 100 units must commence. If 10 dwellings are started, only these can be built to the 2013 standards. The remainder must meet the 2022 standards. Where the previous draft approved document only affected new dwellings, this draft includes standards for existing buildings too. This will include alterations, extensions and changes of use. The 2019 document also only applied to dwellings. This new draft has standards for all buildings, although the changes are less complex for non-domestic buildings. There was always an assumption this would happen, but now it's written down. There are now two documents for Part L, Volume 1 for dwellings and Volume 2 for non-domestic buildings. This is similar to Part B for fire safety, where you have Volume 1 for dwellings and Volume 2 for buildings other than dwellings. The SAP and SBEM Energy Assessment Calculation Tool is to be revised under the new Part L. The CO2 emission target will be retained for all buildings, with fabric energy efficiency rate for dwellings only. Maximum permitted primary energy rate is a new standard and this will be applied to all buildings. Uplift in fabric insulation standards and efficiency standards for heating hot water and ventilation systems are also included for all buildings. The new Part L brings changes to the required U values. Some key elements are on screen now. You can see them all in the full draft document. That's linked in the video description. Note that for windows, the U value of 1.2 watts per meter squared K is for the whole frame and not just the centre pane of glass. This means it's more likely that triple glazed windows will be required. For extensions or any new wall, roof or floor, there will also be changes to the required U value. These are on screen now. The new approved document is part of the transition towards the future of low carbon heating systems. Heat pump boilers will be the most favourable heating system to get a pass within the Part L assessment. Gas boilers will make SAP harder to pass for all house types. Photovoltaics or PVs are likely to be required on most dwellings with any gas central heating system. Electric panel heaters will be very hard to get a pass, except in very well insulated homes with PV arrays on the roof. LED lighting can help make improvements and will help get a pass. Wastewater heat recovery systems will be required or passing a SAP 
will prove challenging. There will be a greater focus placed on as-built construction to reduce the gap between design performance and as-built performance. All new dwellings will require air permeability testing. Sample testing on larger developments will no longer be permitted. An on-site audit of building details and thermal elements will be required during construction and at completion for building regulation approval. Drawings should be reviewed by the designer and installer to ensure continuity of insulation, limitation of thermal bridging, buildability and robustness is all achieved. Precise and detailed guidance is provided for construction details to all insulated thermal elements within the new approved document. The on-site audit should be undertaken to include photographs that confirm the design details being constructed correctly and in line with Partel guidance. The on-site audit will be in a standardised form. This is called the BREL Report of Compliance. On-site audits will likely be completed by the site team and provided to the energy assessors to include within their SAP or SBEM calculations. The BREL report should be signed by the designer, installer and SAP assessor before provided to building control. All this is intended to increase liability if as-built performance does not meet the as-designed performance. This aims to reduce the performance gap between the designs and completed buildings. The 2022 Partel will bring some major changes to the 2013 standard. It's important that all designers and developers are aware of these changes, as it could have a significant impact on the design of houses and apartments. If you have any questions about these documents, please feel free to contact me on the number on screen now. Thanks again for watching.